Hey, what's up guys? So if you've ever had to design a circuit to measure voltage or current in your project, you'll know that sometimes that requires a lot of external components. Uh, if you want those measurements to be accurate, you gotta think about a lot of different things. Uh, or in other words, a lot of things could go wrong. So uh, here is a part that kinda just does it all for you. It's called the LTC2945. Uh, and I actually came across this part for another project and thought it was so cool that I went and designed my own little mini board with just this part on it. And, uh, and I also give these boards out uh, to the patrons of this channel. So check the description below for more information about that. So anyway, you talk to the part over a standard I2C interface. So it works with you know your Arduino, Raspberry Pi, or whatever else. And uh, it measures input voltages up to 80 volts. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of other bells and whistles, like it will uh, store the minimum and maximum values it reads. Uh, it can uh, trigger alerts based on upper and lower limits. They throw in an extra analog input that you can use for other things. Um, and here is actually sort of how I have it hooked up here on the board, and we'll get into that. In fact, let me jump over to my wiki page here. I created a little wiki here for the board. And this is how I have it designed. Uh, this is a snapshot from that data sheet. And so you've got your input voltage over here. It could be a battery, wall adapter, whatever. And then it feeds through a sense resistor here. And the part will measure the voltage across that sense resistor. And that's what you go and read. You get that value out, convert it to a voltage, divide it by whatever sense resistor you have on the board. Uh, and then you have current. It's Ohm's law, right? So then out here, V out is where your load or your microcontroller circuit is or whatever else. Uh, and in my case, I'm then, you know, I've got the 3.3 volt supply out here and then that back feeds the actual part itself, okay? You could also hook it up so that it is powered by the actual input voltage as well. So that's another option. And you can see here, we've got the I squared C with the pull up resistors and all that stuff. So we'll scroll down a little bit here, and this is the actual schematic I have. So it's just, it's dead simple. There's nothing there. It's a, the chip, a bypass cap, and some headers. So you've got the header for the control stuff over there, ground, 3.3 volts, I squared C. You can also use five volts too, doesn't matter. Uh, you've got the alert pin in that extra analog input. And then right here, the sense plus and sense minus goes to a female header. I'll show you that real quick, right here. And then you can plug in your own little sense resistor boards here. And I've got four flavors of the sense resistor board. Well, actually, it's not four flavors. It's the same board, just you populate it with different uh, resistor values. And that's what sets the maximum input current and the resolution, right? Because what this is doing, you know, it's, it's just measuring that voltage across there. And uh, the more current through there, you know, the lower the resistor value you want there because the max voltage across here that it can sense is about 100 millivolts. So that's kind of how I set this whole thing up, right? Um, and we'll go through and we'll beat on it a little bit. I got the source measure unit hooked up over here. I also have some Arduino test code that we'll walk through uh, and you'll see it's pretty simple to work with. It's just like, you know, it's just like your digital multimeter. So this is like, if you wanted to hook this up, you, it goes through the sense resistor. So this is your input voltage. This is your output, just like I was saying. And then if we scroll up here back to the board, you can see sort of what I've got going on. So this is your input here, these plus pins here on the header, and then your negative pins go out to your load. I also have the terminal block here. In fact, let me just... Okay, so here is the board all hooked up here to my little AT Mega 328 breakout board, which is preloaded with the Arduino Mini. <laughs> Again, check out the description if you want more information about that board. Uh, all programmed with the USB to serial converter there. Um, and it's hooked up to the board via the I squared C wires here right over. I got 10K pull-ups there external to the board. And yeah, we've got the pins, the, po the positive pins here on the board, your input going in and then the negative for the output to your load and also have the terminal block here for the same kind of thing. Maybe you just, it's a little bit more convenient to hook it up that way or you've got heavier currents or whatever. So I think it'll make a little bit more sense if we go ahead and set this thing up. Okay, so now I've got the source measure unit hooked up there. The positive lead is connected to the positive pins there. 
the negative pin is then hooked up to our load and that's just a 1k ohm resistor and then the negative lead on the other side and I'm also making sure that we have a common ground in the whole system here so I actually grounded that negative lead over to the ground of the microcontroller there so now we're all hooked up and by the way real quick I just want to show you the um, the 328 board will go right here just so you can see the I squared C pins that I'm using so analog 4 is the I squared C data analog 5 is the I squared C clock alright go back to the power monitor board here okay so what we've got here then is a 1k ohm load I'm using the 10 ohm sense resistor so you can see our VN there's a lot going on here on this serial monitor window but it's kind of universal depending on whatever you're doing so you just have to look at the right column and uh, I'll just go ahead and walk you through this so right here we have the input voltage that it's measuring 25 millivolts of resolution with an 80 volt max and it is currently measuring 5 volts so it's pretty good right here then is where you would look if you've got a 10 ohm resistor hooked up 2.5 microamps of resolution 10, 10 milliamp max and it's measuring 5.055 milliamps that's pretty good and then right here, if you had a 1 ohm, 0.1 ohm, 0 0.0 ohm, and then your extra analog input. That gives you 0.5 millivolts of resolution, 2 volt max. Okay, so anyway, that is the measurement there. And uh, 5 volts. So actually, what I'm going to do is disconnect the load for a second. And I'll just get, I'm going to crank the voltage way up so you can see how it measures that. So now I've just got the positive lead connected right there to the positive terminal. Nothing hooked up to the load side or the minus terminals. And then the negative lead hooked up to the gr system ground of the microcontroller. And you can, still, you can see we're still measuring 5 volts. And I'm going to go ahead up here to the source measure unit. 15 volts. There it is. Nice. I'm going to lower that down to 10. You can see 10 volts there. 20. 30. Oh, that's the max there for that scale. Okay, 30. There's 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80 volts. There it is, 80 volts measured down there at the board. So it's measuring a little high, 80.27. I should really hook up my other uh, bench meter here and measure it right at the pins, but it's pretty good. Okay, so let me lower that way down here before I blow things up. All right. And now we're going to put some, we're going to push some current through the board here directly. So I'm going to reconfigure the source measure unit to be a current source. Okay, so now the source measure unit's configured as a current source, 10 milliamps there. I've, I'm now hooking up to the uh, terminal block input straight across there. The negative pins there. I've got tied again over to ground, so we've got the same ground, common ground for the whole board there. And you can see down here, if we go to the 10 ohm scale, 9.997 milliamps. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to, let's just crank it way down. How about 100 microamps? Can it measure 100 microamps? Yep, no problem. 0 0.100 milliamps. That's pretty good. Yeah, let's keep going here. 90, 80, 70, 50 microamps. Yep, no problem. Let's go down to like 10. So now it's measuring 10 microamps. So that's pretty good. And we'll keep going. Let's just see if go one over there. So there's five and it can still measure five microamps. So that's pretty good. These are 1% tolerant uh, resistors. So anyway, not too bad. Uh, now, Let's just swap out the resistor here for something else, and then we'll dive into the code a bit. So I'm going to jump in, not to the, yeah, let's do the point 0.1. So the point 0.1 will give us 1 amp max. Yeah, let's throw that in real quick there. So obviously we got to crank that up a little bit. So now we're measuring a half an amp, and you can see we've got 498 milliamps. It's pretty good. And then just, just throw an amp through there, and there we go. Nine nine. Well, there we go. One amp. 
measured. So, you know, that's kind of how it works, depending on the burden resistor. And we could even crank uh, 10 amps through this. Well, actually, not 10 amps. Let me jump back over to the wiki here. So this is actually something I overlooked. If you see here, we've got the 0 0.01, and I'm showing 10 amp max. Well, really, the 0 0.01 ohm resistor there is only a quarter watt. So you can't push 10 amps through it. It's more like 5 amps. So I'll have to put a note in there uh, to watch out because obviously through that burden resistor, through the sense resistor here, you've got to watch your power. So these are all quarter watt resistors. Okay, so let me jump into the code now and we'll talk a little bit about how this whole thing works. And it's just dead simple. This is test code, by the way. So, you know, we can clean this up, put it into different functions and all that kind of stuff. And right now, everything is one way only. We're only reading... Uh, registers from the device. We could also configure things, program thresholds, the upper lower limits, and all that kind of stuff, but we're not dealing with any of that right now. It also does power monitoring, which I'm not using right now because I can just do the power calculation in the microcontroller, but it will do that uh, multiply function for you and take the current value and the voltage value, multiply them together, store them in a register, and then compare that to the threshold value. So that's only useful if you're doing, you know, uh, a high, if it ever hits this limit with power, shut things down or alert me and I can do something, you know, in the microcontroller. But anyway, I'm not doing anything with that, so no need to mess with it. Um, I'm gonna scroll down here to the I squared C information. Okay, right here. And over here in the test code, um, we'll jump right in. So we're using the standard wire.h library that comes with the Arduino IDE. I'm using one version 1.8.1. And uh, right here, we've got the I squared C address. And if we go down here, we can actually strap those pins high or low. So if you have like a whole bunch of these devices on your board, you know, you can have different addresses for each of them because it is I squared C. So all the devices could be using the same pins, but you have to have a unique address for each device. I have both of those pins pulled low. So this is the address we're using. And I just copied that right out of here and threw it right here as a pound to find. Got some variables we're dealing with. We'll talk about uh, as we walk through this, wire.begin. And then we're going to go and read the input voltage first. And we look at the register map here. What's cool is out of the box, we really don't have to mess with anything. We don't have to configure this at all. We could if we wanted to. So if you look at the configure or the control register here, um, <clears throat> we can change the operation mode. Like instead of having it continuously measure uh, or run the measurements, uh, you can put it into a snapshot mode. So if you just want to like, hey, what is the you know trigger? Like you want to measure everything right now, you can put it into snapshot mode and then you can trigger when those measurements take place. Uh, but I'm actually allowing it to just continuously uh, run those measurements at, I think it runs at like 7.5 hertz, something like that. Okay, so uh, by default, though, it's in continuous scan mode, um, and we don't have to mess with anything else here. It's all good. Um, and then right in the, I'm going to go to the register map here. So if we're measuring, uh, if we're measuring the current, we need to measure that sense value and it comes in as two bytes sense the most significant byte and the least significant byte and uh, we combine those into the 12 bit value and then convert that to a voltage and then divide that voltage by the sense resistor value and then we get the current so that's in address 14 and 15 um, and then we got the vn right here and 1e and 1f and then we have that extra analog input value sitting in 28 and 29. So right away, the first thing that took me a while with this part is the I squared C protocol with it is not as standard as some of the devices I've used in the past. So I actually had to hook up a logic analyzer and compare it, you know, to this timing diagram here and this format here until I could get it just right to work. And this is what I found to work. So, you know, we do the begin transmission with the address. We want to read data out of 1E. We're going to read the input voltage first. Then we end the transmission. We have to set this to false. Okay, and you can look these up and see what they are. I actually had experiment with them back and forth 
uh, to see what, what actually was able to work with it. Uh, then we do a wire dot request from that address and we're requesting two bytes. Uh, a little delay there and then read them out. We grab the uh, MSB, then the LSB, and then we convert those into the 12-bit integer value. So let's go down here. And the way those come out at you, if we scroll down, you'll see right here, you get those in this format here. So you see the LSB, the bottom four bits are reserved, they're not used. So the data actually starts at bit location four here. So I actually shift it down by four, and then just for good measure, end it with an F, which is uh, the bottom four ones there to clear out anything garbage that might be up there. Uh, and then I take the MSB, map it to an unsigned int, and then uh, shift that over to the left four places, and now you have that combined 12-bit value. Okay, so now we've got that 12-bit value, and then we can convert it to a voltage. We take the, the value, and we know it's got a 25 millivolt resolution, so that's per bit, 25 millivolts, multiply it up, and then we get our final voltage. Okay, the next part is to grab the uh, analog input, that extra analog input I'm talking about with a 2-volt max. Uh, same kind of deal. It starts at 28 same thing mapping over except now we multiply it by uh, 0.5 millivolts and you've got your voltage then to get the sense current a little bit more involved but not too bad we start at 14 grab the msb lsb convert it to the 12 bit value now you have the value but to convert it to the different voltage or not the different voltages but the different currents you'll have to ha multiply it by um, different scaling factors so like you know, we have the, the resolution. It's always, it's got a 25 microvolt resolution for that voltage. Okay, so right here, if I want to just measure amps, so the 0 0.01 resistor value, I display that in amps all the way right here. Okay, I display that as amps. So I multiply it to get the voltage first by 25 microamps and then divide it by the uh, resistor value in ohms, 0 0.01, um, and that's fine. But at these values here, so for the 10, the 1, and the 0.1, I want to display those in milliamps, which is why I've taken three zeros off of it, and now it's multiplying by 25 millivolts. So if you're looking at it, you know, just keep that in mind if that's confusing to you at all. And then I go ahead and print it all out. Okay, so that's it. That's the test code. That's a little bit of a demo there on the bench. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps. And we'll see you next time.